Okay, welcome to this presentation on ebook typography. What am I going to be covering today? Here's a little diagram of what we have in this presentation. I'm going to talk about embedding fonts. I'm going to talk about the space that we have available to us in our ebooks and what kind of embellishments, what about color, what about borders and so on. And then headings, headings are very important, headings, subheadings and so on. What can we do with these headings? What about landscape and portrait? Now tablets can be viewed either in a horizontal format or vertical format. What happens when we, when we do this? What happens when we turn our, our de devices round? And what control do we have over this? Columns, can we use columns? What's a page exactly? What do we, how do we control the page break? How do we be sure that, that what we have is gonna be on that page and not move on to the next page? And widows and orphans, can we use those? Can we add content? So for example, can we have something at the end of each paragraph or end of each uh, section? And can we repeat that automatically? Can we use tables? And what about asides? What about sidebar information, footnotes and hyperlinks and so on? And then finally, do we have any special effects that we should talk about? How about drop caps and reversing out and shadows and so forth? Sorry about this, but I'm going to do a shameless plug for my book, ebook typography, on which this is uh, this presentation is based. Uh, available from all good iBook stores on the Apple uh, iBook store. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let's just talk very briefly about three different kinds of ebooks, because the publishers really do have a decision to make here about what kind of ebook to create. Reflurable, first of all, which is what I'm mostly referring to in my presentation today where the user can change many visual attributes of the book. User can change the font, the font size, and so forth. On the other hand, publishers can create a fixed layout book, just like the printed page. Um, and then what happens here is that the user can't really change anything. They, they get what they, they see, they, they see what they get, they get what they see. On the other hand, there might be lots of bells and whistles that you want to add. It may be that you don't want to use the user interface of the ebook reader, such as iBooks. You might want to create your own. And for that, you're going to need to create an app and deliver that as a book. So maybe you create something like the, uh, the Wasteland, uh, the beautiful Wasteland, which is created by TouchPress. Okay, reflurable books. They're great for users of ebooks because the user can change the typeface and the size of the font. The content area, though, is fluid. So the typography and the design for, is actually quite elusive for the designer. You don't really know what, uh, what is going to happen when the user increases the font size. It's very hard to determine where the content finishes at the bottom of the page, for example. In reflurable ebooks, the designer is able to initialize the design, in other words, to make what is, is they want to begin with. But you need to really think about this dynamic space. And this is very, why well, I put webbish here is because this is really a kind of web design type of uh, uh, concept. Um, we're dealing with a fluid space. So as on a web page, the website can be viewed in a number of different ways. So the user of a website can change their window size and so forth. We can find control the attributes of the styling with CSS, with cascading style sheets. But if you're tending to use a WYSIWYG tool, or what you see is what you get tools such as InDesign for page layout, don't be uh, lulled into thinking that what you're seeing on the page is what the user is going to get in the final ebook. The key to all of this is attention to detail. You really must make sure that all of your typographer's quotes are in there rather than these uh, inch marks or kitchen, uh, what do we call them? Um, chicken scratchings, uh, some people refer to them as. So you need those proper curly quotes. Um, InDesign, if you're using InDesign, will we'll cope with that for you. Uh, but if you're not using InDesign, make sure that you put those back into your um, HTML. As you can see here in this presentation slide, um, I'm actually showing that it is also possible to use different language uh, versions of, um, of, the, of these quotes. Okay, so what about fonts? Now this is an important element to this. What kinds of fonts can we use and how do we embed them? If you want to embed your font, you can do that, but different devices are challenging. That is to say, not all devices will support all of the fonts, all of the font types indeed. 
So you may have to compromise. So let's say you've built something for print and you're now ready to take that into an ebook. There may be some situations where you have to uh, change the font. And whatever you do, avoid building your text as image. Don't uh, try to avoid the idea of having, for example, uh, captions or headings uh, built as images rather than text because then of course what's happening is you're preventing the users from using the search facility within the ebook reader. Different devices are different so tablets and e-readers have their own fonts built into them so if you have a Kindle, if you have a Nuke, if you have a, a Kobo device they have their own fonts. The iPad has a, a, a very large range of fonts that you can use. So if you know what these fonts are, and in fact in my book I do list them all, there are websites as well, as well that list the fonts that are available on iOS devices. If you choose those fonts to use in your ebook, then you don't necessarily have to embed them if you're targeting that particular device. Be careful not to use too many fonts and too many fonts embedding. Uh, you're going to get file bloat. You're going to get a very large uh, file if you, if you do so. Be aware as well that there are rights issues. So, for example, uh, can we really use the font? Is it, is, it, is it licensed for us to do that? Do we have the permission? Now, InDesign, when it embeds the font in the ebook, will obfuscate the font, in other words, make it impossible for people to extract and reuse in some other form. However, some uh, fonts still do not uh, approve of you uh, embedding them into an ebook. So, really uh, be aware of what the license conditions are. There are different font formats, including WAF, uh, OpenType, TrueType. It may be that some devices don't support TrueType because it's not um, really in the specification for the latest EPUB 3. So TrueType is supported on some devices, but it may be that you need to consider thinking about moving towards OpenType because that's an endorsed format by the, for, for the EPUB 3 format. Now, it is possible for the user to control the way that the fonts are used in their reading experience. Um, so as you can see here, I've got an image of the font selector on the iPad, um, and it's uh, got original ticked on there. That means that the font has been embedded by the book creator, and then there are a number of other fonts available to, for the user to select. Now, what, by selecting a font, this will change all of the paragraphs text, that, that is to say, all of the body text. Anything that is uh, effectively marked up with the P or paragraph um, HTML element will be changed. However, heading styles will remain as designed. So, in other words, the, 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 the iBooks reader will respect the designer's choice of headings. Those will stay as they are. The user can change the font size. They can either increase or decrease the font size. Um, so in a sense, you need to be aware of what your starting point is. Be also aware that if the user has changed the font size for another book on their, in their library, on their device, that is uh, respected throughout all of the books that they're reading. So they may come to your book already having increased or decreased the font size. You don't have any control over the initial uh, stage of the, uh, or state of the font size. Now this is just an example of what happens with other devices. So here, for example, is a Kindle. If you've converted your ebook to the Kindle format, um, on a Kindle we can chew or we can do this sort of thing. We can change the font size. We can also change the line spacing and the margins, uh, as well as, uh, of course, choosing a different font. Um, this is just an example. Other devices, uh, for example, on the Kobo, here's an image from, a, from a, a, a basic Kobo device. And as you can see, we can also change the font size, the line spacing and the margins. Uh, on an iBook, we can't adjust the margins as a, as a user of that device. But as you can see here, we can also um, select justification as well as another, another thing that we can change. OK, moving on now to spacing. Um, the page itself um, um, has its already has its margin set, although as you could see in the previous two examples, there are some cases where the user has control over the margins. Your content area is limited in a reflowable ebook because the margin, it, what you're setting as a margin as a book designer is inside that device margin. 
Here is an example <coughs> of a page in a um, in my uh, ebook typography book, which is actually just demonstrating what that page uh, space is available. So you have on the iPad that amount of space. The margins around it are not available to you in a reflurable ebook. So be aware that when you set margins on your page um, using um, CSS, uh, margin left, margin right, etc., um, you're moving inside that space that's uh, defined there by the yellow box. Spacing of paragraphs, um, yes, you can apply margins to paragraphs. Um, don't add empty breaks for space. Don't simply hit the return key uh, between paragraphs because that space might collapse uh, since space will be ignored in the ebook. Um, however, never good practice, of course, to use uh, empty paragraphs for spacing. Use margin or first line indent to define a paragraph. Be generous with your paragraph spacing. That's my own preference, but uh, you know, obviously, be aware that with ebooks you don't have a limitation in terms of the paper that you're using, so you've got plenty of space. So use it generously. First line indent is a kind of traditional way that you might indicate a paragraph, um, but I advise you not to be too subtle with that. You know, make it really appear as if there is a paragraph. Um, you don't want an indent on the first paragraph after the heading, of course, but then, uh, you know, that's uh, book designers will be aware of that. You could, of course, use a drop cap or an elevated cap to indicate the beginning of a, of a paragraph or a section, say. Um, don't overuse these things. Okay, so you can um, space wording. It is possible CSS does have uh, word spacing, uh, but you're not necessarily going to find that uh, coming across from InDesign. Even if you can use it in InDesign, you're not going to get it um, exactly translating into the ebook. Now, you need to be aware of um, how you're justifying your text, um, and we should uh, really, really discuss that in a moment. Now, left aligned text will produce a comfortable word spacing, of course. Uh, so, in other words, you're going to have ragged right. Um, centering text is possible, but I only advise you to do that for your headings, not large amounts of text. Justifying the text can work at large font sizes. Uh, sorry, it can't work at large font sizes, I should say. But justification, um, you should be aware, is possible to be switched on by the user. Let's just have a look at that in a moment. So here we are with uh, justified text. The iPad user, for example, can control uh, for the body text. They can actually decide that they want this text to be justified. You can see here the image which represents the panel uh, of the configuration for the iBooks app. And as you can see, we can turn on or off full justification together with um, auto hyphenation. However, if you as a book designer specifically say in your CSS within the ebook text align left, then that will be respected so the user can't change that. If you use justified text, in other words, if you force your text to be justified, then please be sure to switch on hyphenation as well, because otherwise what you're going to find at large font sizes uh, that you're going to get some ugly spacing between the words. Which brings me to letter spacing. You can, in InDesign, use tracking, as it's called. This will not necessarily translate to the correct CSS for letter spacing, but you can use that in CSS. So we're here. what we're talking about here really is post-editing the CSS once you've exported from InDesign. Some fonts, of course, support kerning pairs. Um, and, but again, it's not just that it's the font, it's also device dependent. So some, some devices won't, will simply ignore kerning pairs within the font, even if you have somehow managed to turn them on. So here's an example. Um, the, the, uh, we've got two different things, well, three different things going on here with this particular font. Um, this particular font has uh, kerning, so the A and the V are pulled together, as you can see in the word Aviva. And then we also have some ligatures available in this font. So the, um, the F and the L are bonded together. The F and the I are bonded together. And uh, as you can see, we, we then lose the dot over the I. So if you choose to, to turn this on, then you will get that happening on some devices with some fonts. Again, it's, I would say, experiment. Uh, you can see in this font we also have um, a rather fancy finial, as it's called. So if the if the letter in the italic um, face of this font uh, is at the end of the word, then followed by a space, in other words, then you can see that you you, you get this um, 
and this lovely swirl uh, on the letter E. Now I should talk about poetry in verse because this is a special case since the line endings should be respected um, wherever possible by the, the way that the poet uh, originally uh, conceived of this. Um, so if um, what is going to happen here is however is that if the lines are quite long uh, then the font, uh, the, the line of text, I should say, will be broken if the user increases the font size. Um, so in a sense you have to think about this because what is going to happen is that the, uh, the next line or the line that breaks, the, the, the text that moves on to the next line, uh, you might need to think about how you define that um, carefully so that it doesn't appear as if it's the second or the, another line in the line of the poem. Um, so the way that I tend to do this is to use a, uh, a negative first line indent on the line. So, sorry, I should just go back one step. The line itself needs to be in a paragraph. So each line is a paragraph rather than a, with a soft break at the end. Um, so that's giving it a, a full paragraph for each line gives you a lot more control over the spacing and, as you can see here, the indenting. So here I've got a text indent of minus 30 pixels, but a padding on the left of 60 pixels, therefore giving me a general overall uh, 30 pixel indent with another 30 pixel when that line breaks, if the line is uh, too short, it, 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 space is too short to accommodate the whole line. Okay, what about embellishments? Uh, well, we can use colour, of course. That's the first thing. I should emphasise this because colour is not going to cost you any more in your ebook. So even if you are coming from a black and white book, uh, in other words, a printed book that's printed in black uh, on white uh, on a white stock, uh, yes, uh, you know, you, we can use colour. Uh, we can use colour in the, in the headings, particularly. We can even reverse out of solid colour. Um, and then we can use uh, highlighted text within the paragraphs and so on. Be aware though that you must make sure that you're going to get contrast for good readability. Don't put um, you know, dark colours on dark backgrounds. And also test on black and white devices. Don't forget your, your ebook may look great on a, an iPad, but what's it going to look like when it's shown on a black and white uh, Kindle or Kobo? Okay, borders. Um, <clears throat> we can use borders on text. Um, we can surround box, uh, blocks of text with borders. Um, use, uh, use these borders uh, rather than using a simple underline. Underline is, is one way, of course, of putting a line under some text, but you don't have any control over the spacing of that. It's simply in the colour of the text. Uh, there's no uh, space between the, the bottom of the, 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 the characters and the uh, and the line, or at least you don't have any control over it. Um, the rules from InDesign will not export as, bo as borders, so you can s specify a rule in InDesign, above or below, which of course will print uh, beautifully, but that does not export then into the EPUB as a border. Okay, um, swashes, um, yes, uh, some fonts do support swashes. This Zapfino font is a sort of exaggerated example of that, so as you can see with um, with alternate swashes switched on uh, in the lower example here, we get um, very sophisticated um, complexity here with the letter Z joining up with the, with the end of the uh, O. It's again device dependent, that's not going to work on all devices, but and you're not going to be able to utilise that from any settings within InDesign, so you will have to invoke that with your CSS. Headings are an important aspect because not only are headings going to divide your book possibly into, uh, into chunks or chapters or sections, um, but also you're going to want to use those headings in your table of contents. So you want your headings to start on a new page, needless to say. I'm not saying that you have to, but you're quite likely to want to do that. You might consider using a whole page, as I have in my, in my book, that you, the, the book on ebook typography, as you'll see in the next example. You could possibly even decorate that page with an image um, and, and, and even use background images. And here's the example from the book on ebook typography, the introductory chapter. So what I've done here is I, I've created a, a background image and I have my, uh, my heading sitting over the top of that and then a very small amount of text, just a, a, an introduction to, this, uh, ch to each chapter. And then I move on to the next page. Okay, so what happens with landscape and portraits? Now, now, uh, if we turn our book 
with an uh, an iPad. If we have an iPad, if we're fortunate and to know uh, to own one of those wonderful devices, you turn your uh, your book round to um, horizontal format, then you're going to see pages side by side. Um, and so we can view this text in either orientation. So some devices will just give you a wide page in landscape view. Um, and it is possible post-production from InDesign and exporting to EPUB when you've finally done all of your work and, and, and satisfied with, the, with the, the, the look of the text and so on, then you can edit the metadata inside the ebook to lock the orientation. Now this is only at the moment supported on the iPad as far as I know. I may be I may need to be corrected on that, but um, we can for example target specific uh, devices. So say you might want your your book to look one way on the iPad and another way on the iPhone. And so you can lock this uh, this orientation. So in landscape view, we have this double page spread, but you don't know what is the left or the right page. So you're not able as a book designer to say, this is going to be on the left, this is going to be on the right. What's going to happen is as soon as somebody increases or decreases the font size, this is all going to shift around. Of course, your first page or two will be uh, you know, controllable to a certain extent. You're certainly going to start off um, on the left and then the next page will be on the right. However, um, you can't say uh, you're not creating a double page spread at, at any time. You're, you're just simply um, having one page side by side and which those pages are is not uh, under your control. As I said before, you can, orientate, you can lock that orientation if you want. Columns is my next uh, discussion point, or there's not very much to say about this other than to say that when you're using InDesign, of course, you can use columns. And of course, you maybe want to con convert content that is uh, currently uh, using columns in the print version. Uh, and you can use columns in CSS. It is a feature of the cascading style sheet language for HTML and uh, web design. But columns over, a, over more than one page on an ebook is is not really uh, viewable, not really workable. Um, so you can provide them, but they will not work over more than one page. The only time that you can really use columns is if you have a very short amount of text as an introductory at the top of the page. So as long as it doesn't cross over two pages, um, then you can use columns as I as I ex show you in this example of Robinson Crusoe. Which brings me to controlling the page. Um, the page itself, of course, uh, it, to a certain extent, is rather an elusive uh, concept in an ebook because as somebody increases the font size, then the text will flow on to another page. However, uh, the one thing that you really want to do, and if you're working with InDesign, is to make sure that you split the EPUB at the appropriate uh, place. Um, so here we have. Um, under our InDesign uh, paragraph style options, export tagging, and I'm switching on split document for the EPUB at this heading. So this heading will then make sure, we'll make sure that this will always start at the top of the page. You can always as well incorporate CSS control uh, as examples shown here. You can, for example, say, in the CSS, so for example, with a subheading, you might want to also break the page at that point, always start at that time. Uh, so starting before always, or as you can see, there's also similar control for after a certain point. Just while we're on the subject of page breaking, um, we might talk about within the elements, we might want to avoid breaking pages within certain elements. If, for example, you've got an image with a caption, you want to avoid that caption moving on to the next page, leaving the image behind. So you can set page break inside a void, CSS, for that particular block. But to be honest, it's not rigidly applied. Of course, that's why we have the word avoid in there. Um, it may be that the circumstances are such that the book cannot avoid but move the text onto the next page. So you have to accept that sometimes the element, and here's an example um, in my book, I'm, I'm, I'm describing some code that we might want to use in the uh, CSS. And as you can see, I, there's no way that I can prevent that from moving on to the next page or the, the, the block of information. And then uh, what about the left or the right? Uh, it is possible, I mean, there are 
documented uh, rules within CSS that allow you to have page break after the, the write and even within um, the properties of the, uh, the package uh, metadata file we would be able to use something like page, page spread write so things only move onto the right page in, the, in both of these examples but I'm afraid that's uh, not really supported at the moment as far as I can tell. And similarly, uh, widows and orphans are not really supported, um, although you can use widows and orphans within CSS as yet, we're not really seeing a, a lot of support for that. It is possible for us to put content at the end of each section. You sometimes will see something like this where you have a little flourish at the end of a section. Uh, at the bottom of this page here, uh, decorative items, and we can add that with CSS. It is possible for CSS to, 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 to add content. And here's an example of it. So in this heading, I've got a little um, character at the beginning of this text and at the end of the character, at the end of the, of the heading. That's not actually in the HTML, it's rather it's in the CSS. So as you can see here, I'm using H3 after and H3 before, and then I'm providing that little uh, zap dingbats character in there and that's then um, coming into the uh, into the heading tables are a good idea where you're using data of some sort um, here's an example here um, so we can use small um, tables and we we basically want to make sure that these are real this is real text and not images and in, on the iPad, if you have a table like this, you can double tap on it and it will enlarge that up for easy, easy viewing. But it's also possible to add tables outside the content. So you could create a, an HTML page with a, a table in that page um, and then have a hyperlink to it. Um, and that works very well on iOS de devices. iBooks works very well because we can then scroll through large amounts of content using that way. We can add uh, supplementary material, we can have asides and footnotes and so on, um, but you know there are some problems with this because we have very uh, limited space, especially in some views, uh, landscape uh, view for example on the iPad gives us very limited space uh, and so sidebar content can be there but you don't really have access to the, uh, the, 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 the margin as I've said before. Um, and also be aware that you don't have left and right again. So you can't have, say, for example, sidebar content moving over to the left in one case and over to the right on another case uh, because we don't have the knowledge about which is the spine side at all. So you should really use a side. Um, and here's an example here. So I've got an aside element floating off to the left, although as you can see, we, we do have a limited amount of space. So sometimes it doesn't really make a lot of sense to use that technique. Um, the iPad also supports pop-up text. Um, so we can, and this is a, a, a feature of EPUB 3, which is a, a, um, a very use, going to be a very useful feature for having things like uh, glossary items and so on. But currently, as far as I know, uh, again, this is this presentation is bound to be dated um, soon. Uh, you are going to only get support on the iPad for that. We can also have other kinds of nonlinear resources. So again, this is supported on the iPad. If we, for example, in the specifications for that particular item in our content, uh, we can have uh, linear equals no, which means that basically that content is not available to us as we page through the book, but it can be available to us as we hyperlink to it. This is, of course, quite difficult to demonstrate, but I can uh, guarantee you that I've got some examples of that in my book. So um, footnotes and references, of course, uh, footnotes don't really make any sense. As we've said before, we, we are uh, unable to control the page, so therefore footnotes are not really uh, of any sense at all. But however, you can put references at the end of the book or at the end of the chapter and then link to those. Although ideally the pop-up uh, text, uh, of course, is, is the better solution, um, only supported currently, as I say, on the iPad. Special effects, um, it's worth having a look at a few things that we might want to add. Um, it's important to note that sometimes these things are not really 
uh, features that may come from InDesign, although again, these things do change. So uh, it depends on the current version of InDesign that you're using as to whether these things are supported. If you put a background uh, or a shadow on a block in InDesign, the question will be, is that going to then appear in your ebook? Well, um, the truth is that we can add these in any way later if we don't get that to be supported. So CSS does support text shadow and block shadow as you can see here um, so we can we can do that we, as uh, also we can use background now it's very important to note with a re reflowable ebook we cannot use uh, full page background we, although we can set a background on the body of an individual HTML page you're only going to be seeing that color in the central part of the page we cannot um, get access to the margins so your your best approach really if you want to use background color is to do as I've done in this example here just in a block of text or in a background or something like that so here we have an example of, uh, of, of that as well on this page, so background colour in the heading. But here on this page I'm talking about drop caps. So drop caps uh, is supported uh, and then again this is something that you may find works well or not so well depending on your version of InDesign. When you use drop caps in InDesign it will export to drop caps. Um, and then the and, and, and actually the later versions of InDesign uh, work better than earlier versions. Um, here we have um, the uh, an idea of differentiating the first paragraph where we want to use. I'm using here a small caps um, uh, font in here, and this is a, an important aspect of in, the relationship between InDesign and the ebook export. Because of course, um, to do this in InDesign, you might well select all of that text in the first line, create a character style within that paragraph, and then you have. Uh, you, you, you have that working for you. However, and there are other sophisticated, more sophisticated nested styles that we can utilize. However, when we export this to the EPUB, um, you're only going to find it's working on the uh, certain number of uh, words or characters in that line as it was presented to you in InDesign. Um, this, of course, is a fluid line because as somebody increases the font size, then, of course, this is going to move uh, into a different l length of line. So um, we need to therefore edit the CSS to get this to work properly. And as you can see here, I'm using the um, the, the, the command P first line, um, which actually intelligently determines which is the first line in this paragraph and how, how long it is, even if the user has changed the font size. And then finally, uh, we can use um, if you would like to use uh, outlines on your headings, you can do that as well. You're not going to get that translating from InDesign, however, but uh, you can use the CSS um, in in um, in that uh, e edited EPUB, and you will get those kinds of results. Here is an example of it. Now, I just want to go few uh, uh, go through a few further notes um, before I finish this presentation. First of all, um, fixed layout ebooks, the typography and the styling in a fixed layout is not changeable by the user. So the user cannot um, increase or decrease the font size. But, uh, and the designers have much more control. But just be aware that every single page uh, will need to become an HTML document in your fixed layout ebook. Um, and if you're using InDesign, uh, be aware that every release of InDesign seems to improve the EPUB export. So if you're only using CS5, 5.5, 6, uh, you may find that you're not getting as good a result if you've moved on to the latest uh, Creative Cloud. Some habits uh, that you're, you, you, you are, if you're, you have some habits in InDesign need to go. You cannot have, um, I mean, overriding text and fonts and, and, and putting in um, extra spacing to, 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 to resolve orphans and widows and so forth. You, you really need to let go of those kinds of habits. Um, we, in reflowable ebooks, um, you need to make sure that everything is threaded together unless uh, you want to move on to a different approach using articles or XML structure. So the normal way is that everything is reflowable um, unless you, you, you want to move on to other uh, methods, although I'm not, I'm not covering that in this particular presentation. 
With images, um, you want to try to group those with captions, of course, um, but the images or the images with captions need to be anchored at the right place in the text location. So I suggest that you ex when you export, you select relative to page or relative to text flow in the later versions um, so that the image um, is not fixed. However, it will uh, change its size depending on the window that it's being viewed on. So devices, uh, smaller devices will then shrink that image down automatically. And then uh, we've already covered this a little bit, but use your heading styles to split the EPUB. Um, and also explicitly give your uh, all of your styles, be they heading styles, um, paragraph styles, character styles, or even object styles, explicitly give them a tag and give them a class name. Uh, don't leave it as automatic. Just uh, get, take control of this yourself. Don't use style overrides. Avoid style overrides wherever possible. And also um, show your hidden characters as you're working with InDesign so you can see where you've got tabs and empty spaces and empty paragraphs because you need to remove those. Or at least put it this way, they will be ignored when you export to EPUB. So don't use those uh, as, as methods of styling. Your table of contents is really important, so you must auto-build that from your heading styles. Don't attempt to hand-build your table of contents. And also bear in mind that master page items are ignored. Leave them in, no problem leaving them in. Have your page numbers if you like for your print version, but they simply are ignored when you export to, uh, to, to, to EPUB. If you plan to use the book idea and then have separate chapters in, in, in uh, InDesign documents within a book panel, uh, th that's a, also a good way of working, but it's quite tricky to then further split the EPUB in each of those separate chapters. You would have to do post-production on that and then uh, put your CSS in there to, to, to break the pages at those appropriate points. And then when you export to EPUB, uh, some things are going to be ignored. Kerning, tracking, baseline shift, balance ragged lines, or uh, hyphenation control, rotation, you know, although, although I should say you can add those things in. You can put those things in by editing the CSS and you will get those things to, to work. You can rotate your text, you can even have text on its side and so forth. And then again, more things to suggest here in the way that you work. Search and replace, of course, is your best friend. Uh, not, this is not the place to cover grep, uh, which is a way of um, pattern matching within your text. You can either use an external editor to, to do this. I, this example here is using BB Edit, where I want to choose um, the, the type that's be, or the, the, the words that have been typed in fully in capitals, and I want to reduce those, re replace those, I should say, with uh, title case. This is uh, the syntax that I'm using within BB Edit. On the other hand, you can also do that within InDesign. So, thank you very much. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you.